Welcome to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned into our program. Honey, let me ask you, have you kept your appointment with God? Well, I've kept a bunch of them. <laughs> you know, honey, I was just thinking about uh, when we got married. Yeah. And I always think... That was what, just a few years uh, oh, ago? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. It's coming up on, what, 52 years? Yeah. Uh, I don't in know December. how that happens when I'm only 50. I know. But, I know. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I was thinking of the fact that when we were walking up to the altar... Yeah. And the song was being sung, and, and some of the lyrics was, We'll walk the well, road of life, life together, together day by day, and well, will I love, love you every step, step of, the of the way. I remember it and to this day. I know, and I think about the steps that God has taken us. Oh, my goodness. If we the had appointments known, that we've had. <laughs> if we had known that then, we'd probably walk back down the steps. <laughs> probably walk back down those aisles, those steps. I yes. don't know. But it, it's been great, you know. And talking about keeping appointments with God, I want, I want to go where I'm talking about keeping your appointment with God. I want all you guys in these red shirts to stand up. All of these guys right here, they have an appointment with God. For what? To help maintain order in a service? To help minister to you? Amen. Come on now. Thank you, guys. Don't they look good? Yeah, give them a hand. Y'all started to, you just started patty cake. John Osteen said, if you're going to clap, clap, don't patty cake. When Jesus walked on the earth, he had divine appointments with people. He met Peter and John, and that was a divine appointment. Hey, he met Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus didn't become a preacher. He just experienced a changed heart. The woman with the issue of blood, when she had her, kept her appointment with Jesus, she said, if I can touch his clothes, I'll be healed. When she kept that appointment, she was changed. She wasn't no preacher. She did the lady sitting in her house, dying with a blood disease. But it said when she heard of Jesus, she realized, if I can get an appointment with him, <laughs> woo! Some of you need to realize you need to get an appointment with Jesus. Jairus, he was just a ruler. He met Jesus and his daughter lived. Man, you could go on and on of the many people that kept an apartment with Jesus. They were healed. They were delivered. Their needs were met. The truth was revealed to them. So here's my question for you tonight. What are you going to do? Are you going to have your appointment with God? You know, today the most miserable people on earth are the ones that have not kept their appointments with God. Some have millions in the bank, but they're spiritually bankrupt. Some have cheesed heights of fame and renown, but, they're, but the living God is unknown to them. Some live in be beautiful mansions, but they're spiritually homeless. They think they have the world by the tail. They've charted their own destinies regardless of what God wants. Today, people are popping pills and using drugs to keep a happy face. But all it's doing is hiding a heavy heart. All human problems can be solved if people would just keep an appointment with God. He'll save their soul. He'll heal their body. He'll meet every need. He'll guide them into the right direction for life. 
He'll deliver them from every bad habit. He will show them why they were born to be on earth in the first place. You know, I hear people all the time say, ooh, wouldn't it have been nice to live back in Jesus' day? No, I wouldn't want to live there. I can have the same Jesus today with all the modern conveniences. <laughs> Come on now. You know, I grew up, you know, I, dad would ministers get together and talk and, and, and I, I'm just a kid, you know, five, six, seven years old. I, I, would, I would always hang. My mother said it didn't matter. After church, dad traveling and preaching. After church, they'd be sitting around at the, because back in those days, we didn't have motels. We stayed in the parsonage with the, with the preacher, the pastor. And all the kids slept on the floor, usually because they didn't have enough bedrooms for us. And we all did have a pallet and put it on the floor and sleep. But mama said, I would stay up and listen to those guys talk to two o'clock in the morning. I, he, she said, you were, you were unusual. But I remember they're talking about some of us, I don't know, somebody <laughs> might have been at, at, at Papa Goodwin's house. I don't know. Anyway, there's about 10 after service come over, about 10 ministers come over and they were eating and so forth. And they're talking about, one of them was an elder, more elder, and he's talking about the good old days. And dad said, as far as I'm concerned, the good old days I'm not interested in. <laughs> you know, isn't it funny how we have selective memory? Oh, uh, y'all not with me. Y'all must be, y'all, y'all too young an audience, I guess. <laughs> how many here know I have ever heard people talk about the good old days? Hey, they're talking about the good old days. They didn't have indoor plumbing. I was there. The first, the first, I remember that parsonage down there in Van where Dad went. We didn't have no indoor plumbing. We put, I helped Dad put it in. I was a first grader. I helped him put it in. Hey, we didn't have no air conditioning either. And we drove at night most of the time because it was cooler, especially down in, in Texas. And like it is out there right now, or was out there, I saw, I saw it look like a storm's coming in. Maybe it'll cool us off, give us a little rain, cool us off a little bit. See, people are failures because they refuse to keep an appointment with God. They want it their way. There are many different things that get, that get, get people's attention. Moses thought he could rise up in his own strength and he couldn't do it. Today, lots of people feel like they, they can do it in their self. But we need to keep a divine, our divine appointment with God. You know, people have a tendency, oh, man, I don't need any help. There's an old song many years ago, I think I heard it say, I can, I, can, I can take care of this job all by myself. No, you can't. You better have an appointment with God because you can't take care of your life. You'll mess it up. But God, if you let God keep an appointment with God, it'll change you. Everything around you will change. Everything in you will change. And everybody around you, you can change. Don't expect to experience the life of God without an appointment with him. That's when the opportunities will come. That's when healing comes. Hey, you may not have a burning bush experience, but, but, but God will use something to try to get your attention. God wants you to keep an appointment with you so that you can become an extension of him wherever you go. And where you go, he goes. And when you speak, he speaks. And when you understand how that how to have those divine appointments with God then every opportunity will open up to you some people want to preach hey just stay steady God will open an opportunity for you up made it to one on one to somebody actually I enjoy doing that there's nothing that thrills me more than to be at those racetracks. And y'all all know, I go, I pray, I, I'm part of them. And there's nothing that thrills me more than to be walking down through those pits. And one of the guys motioned me, go back in his trailer and say, Pastor. They all call me Pastor. <laughs> I was just there last Friday night. 
They call me pastor. I have a problem. There's me an opportunity to take my appointment with God and share it with somebody. I've preached many sermons for almost 60 years from a platform. I've seen many people come for salvation, but there's nothing like ministering one-on-one -on -one to somebody. How many, of you, how many of you know what I'm talking about? There, it, it's just different. It's just different. Hallelujah. God has set his divine alarm clock for you. But too many of you have hit the snooze button. Wake up. Now's the time to have that divine appointment and encounter. God's waiting on you. He's waiting on you because you're the only one that can fulfill that slot. He's wanting you. He's after you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Not to get behind this pulpit. Thank God for all of us that do. But that's a divine, that's a separate divine appointment. But everybody has a divine appointment with God to be his witness and to take healing and help to the world. It doesn't say preachers will lay hands on the sick and they recover. It says believers will lay hands on the sick and recover. That's believers that's had an, an, kept their appointment with God. Not just over here because they don't want to get involved. You need to get all the way into the middle of God and get completely involved with him. He is not, you are not waiting on him. He is waiting on you. He's got the divine appointment set. He's waiting for you to come and get that appointment. For some of you, when you open your heart up, that divine appointment may come through a dream or a vision. It may come to you through that just still, that just still small voice. It may come to you when you're sitting all alone. But tonight... You can have that appointment tonight if you want. During this camp meeting, this is an opportunity for you to have divine appointments with God. Every time you come into this building for a service, come in to experience a divine appointment with God. If you do it that way, you will leave here with the glory and the power of God in your life. And you will go out and you will change things around you. You know, this is your hour. This week is your week. I'm doing the keynote message for this camp meeting. And the keynote message, you know, those conventions, they have a keynote speaker that sets the tone for the, this is setting the tone. This is why God has set the tone for this week. And that is keep your divine appointment with God. This, is a, this week is a divine appointment time with God to help you, to give you everything you need so that when you go back, you can be that burning fire bush for God wherever you are, on the job, in the office, wherever you're at. You can be that. But it's up to you to keep that divine appointment. And you do it by being here and saying, okay, Lord, I'm keeping the appointment. I don't care who's preaching. Don't make no difference who's preaching, who's singing. Doesn't make any difference. I'm coming to keep a divine appointment with you. And I expect that burning bush experience to be in my life. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, I didn't preach it very long, I don't think. I don't even know when I started. Anybody get anything out of this tonight? Do you see, do you understand where, what God's trying to say to us tonight? He's setting the tone for this entire convention. The tone is keep an appointment with God every time you come in this room. 
because if you do, you will be changed. I have called you here so that I may minister to you this week in a special way. If you will open your hearts and if you will receive me with the appointment that I want to make with you, you'll find that when you get back home, some things have already changed and you'll begin to see that the things you've been looking for, the things you've been believing for, they, they will begin to happen. And you'll begin to wonder and say, how can this be? And I will remind you that you kept a divine appointment. And by keeping that divine appointment, you unleashed my power. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's what the Lord's saying. That's what the Holy Spirit's saying. Anybody get a hold of what I said there? Get a hold of it. It's important. Hallelujah. Everybody stand, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes because people need to do something, you know, in public. But there's some people in this congregation tonight. You had a divine appointment with God and you backed away and you need to come back and say, I'm sorry, God, I'm coming back. There's some people here tonight. You have been feeling. I know we don't walk by feelings, but when the Spirit begins to move, how many of you know when the Spirit begins to move on the inside, there, there, there's, there, there, there's, there, I, don't, I don't have the, the words to utter in articulate speech. It's a, it's a, it's a scratching. It's a... It's a, a something on the inside. How many know what I'm talking about? There's some of you that have had that. And God said, that's leading you to your divine appointment. If you're here and that's you, I'm not going to lay hands on you. You need to, this appointment, you and God. I want you to come down here to the front, kneel, begin to pray, whatever. If that's you, come on, come on. Right now, there's a lot of people who need to walk down here. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God, Pete. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. In the Bocoso Liberali, in Mononza, Kibadeshe Seba Kusuta. Oh, there are some of you. Ah ha ha, saith the Lord. Emma, Mon, so Libra, Duche. You've been so uh, tied up with all of the natural things in your life. Aha, Pasili, that you are, have been unable to listen to my voice. But if you will shut out all of those natural things and listen to my voice, oh my, 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 what vision that I shall give you, what plans that I shall give you, what a newness that I shall give you. And it shall be as in day of old. Oh my, 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 oh celebrate that joy that you had, that enthusiasm that you had, oh that that you thought had gone just because of your age. Oh no, 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 saith the Lord for you shall be renewed day by day by day by day if you will just meditate on me. I'm Paseli Gantiche come before me and you will see such great victories in your life saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That was for somebody. May have been for everybody. I don't know. Hallelujah. You know, I, I I'll be 78 in September the 3rd and I don't intend to retire. Now I may, I may turn some stuff over to niece and Craig and but uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to retire. I mean, I, I, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep running the race, baby. I'm going to keep going. You know, we, we don't need to talk about, I, I don't see in the Bible where it talked about any of them retiring. Do you? 
We just keep going for God. Hallelujah. You get old because you start thinking old and won't, I, I'm not thinking old. I'm thinking young. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay here doing what I do. Now, it may not be like you like it, but that's what I do. And you do what you do. And as we all work together for God, it'll all turn out okay. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody get anything tonight? Anybody's life changed tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, speaking of keeping your appointment with God, the most important appointment that you can keep with God is to invite Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior. Or if you've done that before and you've just sort of not where you should be, you can rededicate your life to God. And if that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Repeat it with Lynette after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your son, Jesus. I know. I know. He's the son of God. He's the son of God. And he died for my sin. And he died for my sin. He arose again from the grave. He arose again from the grave. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. You said in your Holy Bible. You said in your Holy Bible. That if I would believe those things in my heart. That if I would believe those things in my heart. And confess them with my mouth. And confess them with my mouth. I would be saved. I would be saved. I thank you now. I thank you now. That I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. That I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. Because I believe in my heart. Because I believe in and my I've heart. And I've confessed with my mouth. And I've confessed with and my I mouth. And I thank you for it now. And I thank you for it now. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer with us, I want you to email partner services at rhema.org. Tell us about it because uh, I, I love to get, when, when stuff comes in, they send it up to my office and yes. I get to read it. I, I, and I love to read the stuff from, as you write in from the, from the television. I love to read those things. I was just reading one the other day and, and it was just so great. And, and actually, I just laid my hands on the, on the piece of paper that was written on and prayed for that individual because I was touched by what they had to say. So yes. partner services at rhema.org. That's right. And honey, talking about keeping your appointment with God. Yes. In order to do that, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit on right. the inside you sure of you. You sure do. You sure do. And we have a, a great offer this week or this month actually yeah. for that. Your dad's, it's I call it a study guide. Yes, what it, that's what we called it originally. That's right. And it's called the Holy Spirit and His Gifts. In fact, a lot of um, groups. Yeah, like a small group, uh -huh. uh, some some. Some pastors Some churches, yeah. have even did it on Wednesday night. Uh, men's groups, ladies' groups. That's right. Have, have they they read this and go through it together and, and answer the questions together. There's actually 20 lessons here. Yes, 20 lessons. And at lessons. the end of each lesson, there's questions to be answered. Right. This is a great study guide. Right. And then your dad's CD, The Glory of God, right. and then four CDs that you've done on the person of the Holy Spirit. Right. And that just explains what the whole, who the Holy Spirit is and what He will do for us in our life. Yeah. Great offer. Retail fifty dollars and ninety five cents. And you know we as ladies like good offers. Oh yeah, you this like is, you do. I, I do. This you is don't a, ever buy anything if it's not on sale. <laughs> no. So we want you to have this. And so we're offering it as a $16 savings. That's $34.95. Yeah, just go right now, get on that, get on your, your computer, rhema.org, and order it right now. That's right. Hey, just one week away. Oh, my goodness. Call to arms. That's right. November 2nd through the 4th. Can you believe no. that, that, that this year's gone? Already? I, I can't it just believe seemed it. like yesterday it, it was the new year, and now here we are already in the next the last month of the year. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to come out of retirement and cook pretty soon, aren't I? Yes, that's right. <laughs> For the holidays. For the holidays. She that's comes right. out of retirement because them grandboys, <laughs> they, they, like, they like Nana's, uh, Nana's 
uh, Christmas Eve dinner and then her her dinner Turkey on, and dressing. on, on, on yes. Christmas Day. Yes. But call to arms, November 2nd through the 4th. Hey, go to rhema.org and you can still sign up. Or actually, if you just want to come down here, you can register at the door. Yes. Uh, I'm speaking. Craig W. Hagen is speaking. That's my son, David Kramer, pastors in Chandler, Arizona, and Marcus Martinez, pastors in Toronto. It's going to be a great time. So, okay, come on and join us and be with us. Well, we better get out of here for today, but I want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. I'm talking to you about the Holy Spirit. A lot of times all we know about the Holy Spirit is a few of the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. There's a whole lot more to know about the Holy Spirit than just a few uh, speaking in tongues, prophesying, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. That's the reason some of you are not living overcoming lives because you don't know Him. The Person of the Holy Spirit, a powerful four CD series by Kenneth W. Hagan to help you become better acquainted with the Holy Spirit. Amen, Jesus is coming in the cloud, not those clouds up there, no. We're gonna be caught up together in the clouds, in the glory. And you see, it won't make any difference whether you're dead or whether you're alive. When you die, you go into that glory. And Kenneth E. Hagan's The Glory of God CD, plus the Holy Spirit and His Gifts study course. Get all of these amazing faith tools right now for only $34.95 by calling 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org. Do it right now. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is seeking someone to devour. Resist your adversary, immovable in the faith. Do not grow tired in doing good. Do not lose heart. For in due time, we will reap if we do not give in. Because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. I cannot be defeated, and I will not quit. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, and be the last Man standing. My senior year, I wasn't really sure where I was headed. I decided that I wanted to go down to Rama in January. I came down one random week and sat in on some classes on a Friday. This is when I knew. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.